And actually, you know what, just because it's quick, let's go ahead and do this too. So I'm going to go to render, key shot, turn off auto merge, and then I'm just going to hit BPR. And what that's going to do is send this boot over to key shot. All right, so key shot uh, brought it in here. So let's go ahead and apply some materials on this thing. Let's type in leather. And leather black sounds good, so I'm just going to click and drag that onto my boot here. Now, once I've dragged it on, I can go to my Materials tab, and it'll show you all these Z mats that are already on there, as well as my leather. Now, if I keep dragging leather over here, it's going to make a new instance of that leather, which is okay if I want to control this leather separately. So I can double-click this and change this color or the material properties. But if I want to just have one leather assigned to all my leather pieces, then I want to not do that. So what I'm going to do is take this leather black, the first one and drag it onto this one. That'll go ahead and delete that other one. So now these two, I can change like the roughness, for example, make it super matte or super shiny, and then it's going to control both of those. So drag a material over and then just keep dragging from your materials tab if you want to keep those consistent. So I'm just going to drag leather here, leather here, and let's just do a quick rubber. And doesn't really matter. So like rubber, we'll put that right on that rubber bead material. Oops, looks like I missed it. Now, when you're dragging from this side and you put it over one, all those materials that are assigned to those objects is going to replace all of those with this new material. So it's kind of like a material group at that point. Let's go ahead and do the sole here, and then we're going to drag from my material tab from this side to this rubber piece here. And you know what? Let's go ahead and make this leather cool. And we'll go ahead and make this little leather piece here in the middle. Now let's see if there's a nylon fabric. I think that'll work. I'm going to go ahead and drag that right onto here. And then from this side, we'll do nylon fabric here. And this one, it's actually going to... Uh, dang, I forgot. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go back to ZBrush. And on these pieces here, what I'm going to do... Oh wait, no, that's right. So these pieces are going to be metal and then these pieces are going to be a separate material. That's fine. So, looking good. So I'm going to take this nylon fabric, put it right on these pieces here. And then I guess I'll go ahead and put that on the shoelaces as well. And now I need, to, need some metal, so I'm just type in steel. And we'll do, I guess, just steel. Let's drag those onto here. And then from steel, we can drag it here. That'll be a plastic. Now I'm going to change the properties of all of these at once. I'm just kind of getting everything on there really quickly. So we got one more here. And let's just do a quick plastic. And of course, you can browse the cat categories there, but um, I'm just gonna gonna look through here for a black hard rough plastic. Let's do a hard shiny plastic, and then I can dumb that down a little bit later. Now, if you don't know what these are assigned to, just right click them and do select parts with material, and that'll go ahead and highlight it for you. You can see, oh, okay, I missed that one. So steel. I can either move it onto this part here, or I can just move it up to this highlighted um, selected object here. It's up to you. So go select parts with material. Ah, these little back pieces here, those will also continue just to get leather black here, leather black, and one more, select parts with material, and those will also get leather black. Now, if that steel is a little bit too shiny, just double click it, and then go in here, change the color a little darker. And if you don't want it quite as shiny, or, you know, that's changing the color. If you don't want it quite as shiny, change the roughness. Just drag this value up and change that roughness a bit. And there you go. So now let's change that leather black. I'm going to make this a little bit more rough here. And on the nylon, under the textures tab, you're going to see there's a bump map there that's giving it kind of that bump kind of that property there. I'm going to tile that a little bit more. So with that selected under, so textures, if there's a bunch of textures loaded in here, if you go down here to the bottom, you can do sync and that'll sync all of your textures up. So while you're scaling them, they'll all scale at the same time. This only has one, so you don't need to turn that on. Then I'll go ahead and scale that and then double click the steel. I'm just going to make this a little bit darker and a little bit warmer. Okay, so now I've got my boot here. If I want to change uh, the environment, I can go over here to the environment. And if we want to, I mean, you can double click any of these environments here and that'll just go ahead and give it a new lying environment. I'm going to actually keep it under studio. I'm going to keep it on the startup, but I'm going to change my background. So I'm going to go here to the background. And then with the ZBrush one, these came with the ZBrush bridge. I'm going to put this boot in a ZBrush workshop. So I'm going to double click that and that's going to open up the background and new things. So I want to take this background, 
go to my camera, I'm sorry, my environment, and where it says ground, you can do, or I'm sorry, background, you can just do a color, and that'll get rid of the environment and just do a color, and you can go in here and change this color if you want to. Or you can do a backplate image, and then I'm just going to browse to my workshop here. There we go. And now I can kind of place this boot in my workshop. I can match it up so that the angles are correct. I can change the lighting by going to the environment tab here and I can change the rotation of my environment. I can change the contrast of the brightness if I want. And you're going to see it goes sharp to blurry in here. I can do that with uh, camera. I can do turn on depth of field. I can do select point of focus. I want to focus on the closest point here. So I'm just going to tap and then click done. And now when I change my f-stop, if I make this really small, you're going to see it focuses on what's closest, makes it sharper, and then as you get farther away from that point of focus, it makes it blurrier. So it kind of matches this image a little bit more. Let's crank that just a little bit more. You got effects down here. You can do bloom, all sorts of cool things. So when you're ready to render, you just hit render. And if you want an alpha transparency, you know, choose something that will support that, like PNG. I don't really need it. Uh, you can change your resolution here. Just hit render, and then it'll go ahead and render that image for you. Once it's done, you can go up here and click save and tell it where to save, or it'll just save by default automatically into your Keyshot 5 renderings folder or wherever you have that set up.